Hello everyone, I'm TG and I'm here to talk to you about this amazing multiplayer experience that is Evil Dead the game. So the Castle Kandar update is here and with it there's all kinds of changes and I am here to give you guys a new fun way to play our boy Pablo. So there is of course a couple different ways that you can play Pablo and they're all pretty fun in my opinion. They're all based around how his ability works, which is he can't be seen by the demon no matter what he does. So if you shoot the gun, if you get into a car, if your fear's high, whatever, you're not going to be seen. And how I usually like to play him, which is not what I'm going to show you guys today, maybe somewhere down the line, but not today, is this kind of like stealth revive build where the demon can't stop you from reviving your teammates because he, you know, usually can't see you with his demon vision. But today I want to show you guys something a little different. We're going to look at a build that I see a lot of Pablos try to use, but very few of them actually use well, which is soloing objectives and sneaking map pieces. And of course, I just got to put the disclaimer out there. Don't be the guy that solos. But if you are going to solo, this is the way you want to do it. Now, first and foremost, we got what I call the support standard. Four points into Shems Plus. This is going to increase the amount that Shems heals you by 30%. And keep in mind that also increases how much you heal your allies with your Shems by 30% as well. The next four points are actually kind of optional. I'm going to tell you what I do. I put one in Long Life Battery. I get that 15% bonus to my flashlight just so I can then put three points into Fear No Evil, which is going to reduce the amount of fear that I generate by 20%. And you might be thinking, well, if Pablo can't be seen, why does he need to reduce the fear? Because if you're off soloing, the demon can still possess you, even though he can't really see you in his demon vision and you're not highlighted to him ever whenever you're on his screen. I still like to keep it in my back pocket just because... Sometimes if you run into the demon, you don't want to get possessed because it does damage to you, number one, and it'll take you off course and it just leads to all kinds of bad stuff. And of course, whenever you're in the thick of things later in the game with your team, the last thing you want is for your support to be possessed. But as I said, that's just me. If you see somewhere else that you want to put those four points, go right ahead because I'm sure you can make use out of them, whatever you do with them. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about amulets and there's a little bit of debate. First, two points into deep pocket amulets is going to increase the amount of amulets you can carry by two, which brings it up to six. Very useful for any support, but especially Pablo, because you're going to be generating extra amulets with your ability. Now, the next six points, they're a little bit more controversial. I put three into reinforced amulet, which is going to give me a damage reduction of 10% when I have a shield active. And then I'm also putting three points into improved amulet, which is going to increase the length of my shield bar by 10%. You don't need that last point to make it 12 because that 2% is really insignificant. So why is this controversial? Well, short answer, these amulet abilities suck. You don't want to use them for pretty much any other character other than I would say Tank Henry. But the reason why they're good on Pablo is because he functions differently. At level 25, he is always going to have at least one shield active. So we'll talk about his ability a little bit later, but basically how it works is when you don't have any shields active, you regenerate until you have a full shield bar. So what that equates to basically is always having a static 10% boost to your defense because you're always going to have a shield active. And in addition to that, all your shield bars are also going to be 10% longer, which doesn't seem like a lot. But when you factor in that you're going to have shield bars the entire match, it does actually equate to an extra few hits and that can change the game. So with that out of the way, moving on. One into first aid. Now this is an ability that kind of doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's actually really good. Even if you just put the one point in it so you can get deeper in the tree, whenever you resurrect someone, they're gonna get 15% more health whenever you pick them up. So generally, whenever you pick up a teammate, I believe they get 25% health the last time I checked. So with this, it's gonna up that to actually 40%. So not so bad. Now, if you know your way around a support, these next points are all going to look very, very familiar. Two points into Deep Pocket Shems Cola. That's going to increase the amount of Shems you can carry by two, bringing your total up to six. Not a beautiful eight like Cheryl, but hey, what can you do? And then two into Packing Pop. That's going to make you start the match with two additional Shems Cola on top of what you already start with. And then finally, to finish off, we are putting four full points into Industrial Strength, and that is going to increase your maximum health by 25, which is not an insignificant figure. So there you have it. There's a few strange points you might think, but believe me, it does work. Nine times out of ten, whenever I play Pablo, things go according to plan. One thing to keep in mind, though, is if your team needs you while you're off grabbing map pieces, please, please, please go back to them. That is your first job as a support, no matter what. Drop everything you're doing and help your team. Now let's quickly talk abilities. First, your active ability is Gift from El Brujo Especial, which means every two minutes you drop an amulet at your feet that you can either pick up or leave for your team. But of course, it's always a better idea to just pick it up yourself and use it because, you know, you share the amulet. 
One thing that I do find with this ability is that like I sometimes forget to use it. Number one, because it's a really long cooldown. And number two, because I have so many amulets anyway, that's really not that important. But you know, that's a good problem to have. Moving on to the bane of all demon players. Of course, I'm talking about infernal camouflage. This is what makes you completely invisible to the demon, no matter what you do for the entire game, unless, unless you go down, because it is still bugged. So keep it in mind, when you go down as Pablo and you're resurrected, you're then visible to the demon all the time. Kind of crappy, but I mean, I'm sure a fix will come eventually. Next, we have what I consider to be the worst support perk in the game, especially after Castle Kandar, because there are so many amulets and shemps everywhere. Legacy of El Brujo makes you begin the match with an amulet at your disposal. And finally, my little Pablito has shamanistic protection, so your shield bar will gradually recover over time until you have at least one full bar. It says gradually, but it's actually really fast. You'll find that out the first time you play with your level 25 Pablo. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is the build for little powerful vagina, Pablito. Go ahead and try it out yourself, and I hope it helps you out just a little bit, and if it does, or if you change anything, let me know down below and why, and of course on top of all that, let me know what you guys are most excited for when it comes to Evil Dead the game, because I know we got all kinds of good stuff coming. It might seem like it's a little slow going, but the wait's going to be worth it. And of course guys, don't forget to stick around the channel for more builds and guides down the road for Evil Dead the game, and of course, I'm TG. If you like what you saw, you know what to do.